Okay. So, I thought maybe <laughs> my neighbor might finish, but you never know. And I thought maybe I could see my comments and see things, but no. So, I am... <laughs> I am blind with comments and sadly you guys have the privilege of hearing my neighbor and his obsession with his uh, blower thing. Yeah, he, uh, he really does enjoy it. <laughs> It'd be fine if it was consistent. Yeah, but see, he goes, goes on, comes off, goes on, comes off. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. All right. Hello and welcome. And thank you so, so much for joining me. I'm Shannon and this is Paper Delights. And I come on every Monday and Friday to perhaps uh, to try and motivate you and encourage you and just to, you know, do some crafts and have some fun. So I had a real challenge because I am waiting for an order of white paper and so I have some but not a ton and so my challenge was to try and have cra uh, cards for you guys for tonight that didn't really require white paper so two of them don't so you can tell me what you think but first I want to show you this beautiful beautiful uh, a dandy laser cut paper it is absolutely gorgeous it comes there's two pieces and there's usually a uh, tissue paper between how gorgeous are these let me tell you so we're using one this one here has got dragonflies and some nice patterns so so pretty and some leaves and stuff on the side and then this one here has a few other pieces and dragonflies Look at this for, for your sentiment and stuff. So pretty. So. Oh, I'm so glad you can hardly hear it. Okay, good. I can hear it. <laughs> oh, it's all good. All right. So my first card for tonight is using one of the uh, pieces. Now, usually it's white like this. Um... And I thought I would try and do like, like a masking, like what we've done with stamping, but only with this image. But again, I was trying to minimize my white. So then I remembered that at Christmas time, we had done one with almost looked like, like the Northern Lights with the blue over the green. So I thought we would sort of give that a try. So what I did was I cut a piece of the granny apple green to the exact size of the paper. Although it does look pretty like that, but that's not the look I was going for. So then what I did was I took it like this and I took a piece, a couple pieces of my sticky notes that are full adhesive and I stuck it on my paper to hold everything in place, just like so. Then you're gonna take your beautiful blending brush. Hopefully, they were out of stock, I think, for a while. Um, you can take your blending brush. The other thing that I did use, because I had one left, was my sponge, haha. <laughs> so, for this, what I did was I took my sponge and I would sort of dab it because I wanted to try and get into some of the um, spaces. And then I found dabbing it for this one in particular just worked a little bit better than brushing it because I found sometimes if I brushed it, I was moving the um, image, see, like I did there. So I found if I just kind of dabbed a little bit, I just found it worked a little bit better for me, but you find what works for you. So basically you just sort of go all the way around until you have it all completely covered. And then when you take it off, you're left with a piece that looks like that. 
right? So like I said, you can use it with the blending brushes. Just have to make sure that you go in the direction of the piece because otherwise if you go in the opposite direction you'll get ink underneath the image that you're trying to create right so whatever works for you whether you like the sponges or whether you like the brushes again the only thing though is that you can't do circular motions with it you can only do one direction and then when you're happy with it I just took this off, swapped places, and then proceeded to do the same thing to the bottom. And again, I went in an upward direction. So I think this technique would look really pretty with like on a white with a pale blue. So I'm even just sort of sponging it like this just so I can get some coverage. I'm trying to do it quickly because I really don't think, uh, I really don't think uh, you guys want to watch me sponge this all evening. So, so you get it to where you like it. I'm just going to do a little bit darker up here. And then you take off your top piece and that's what you have left. Now this piece, as you see, now that it's got some of the blue on it, you know, on a piece of white would be really pretty, right? So it, it, it does have uh, several uses. So then what I did with this is I um, took the same garden green and I just wanted to add again a little bit of just so that it's not quite so flat and I just sort of almost to add like a little bit of shading that makes any sense then I took my spritz bottle my spritz bottle I've got if you remember from Christmas I've got a spritz bottle with champagne mist and one with uh, vanilla frost um, so with this one I made the mistake of putting down the vanilla frost little dots on it first and then spritzing it and it kind of splurged some of the little dots. So I would suggest spritzing it first. And then what I did was I just took the back of a little crochet thing, dabbed it in the white, and I just did little dots all over. So I was sort of going for like, it looks like the night sky with the stars. So that was sort of the look I was going for. I don't know what do you guys think so then for this one I had a piece of the um, Knight of Navy and then this pretty pretty gorgeous ribbon I love this ribbon it's one of my favorites now it's reversible so it's green on the one side and the pretty peacock on the other side and tied that off and then this is one of the little uh, dragonflies from that set as well so pretty eh? Isn't that pretty so there's our first card I don't know like I said considering I didn't have any white paper I thought that one turned out pretty good so so there's our first card all right next sort of in the same line I was very creative I had I had I had all day to play so it was kind of fun so this one, again, I didn't have white paper, but I did have some of the um, 
fluid paper. So some of the gorgeous watercolor paper. So I took my sheet and I just cut it in half. Now, depending on what products you have, you can play around with it a little differently. I have some of these water crystals. And so what I did was I put some paper towel down. As you can see, it's very messy. I put my paper towel down. I had my spritzer with water. I, I got it a little bit wet first. Then you just shake some of the powder on it. And then you spritz it some more and you sort of watch it go all over the place. I didn't want it quite as bright. And so I dabbed it off with my paper towel and then I added different colors and different layers until I got the colors that I wanted. So this was the first one. So it has a bit darker blotches than this one here. This one I try to use um, with the inks but I don't have the refill inks. So I've seen some people where they'll take their little bottles of refill inks on the watercolor paper and just sort of do drops. So they spray it first with water and then do little drops with their inks from their refill pads. And so that can be really beautiful as well. So a couple of different ways of doing it. So have fun, you know, come up with something that you really like. So then what I did was, this is crumb cake, and this is the dies from the Hippo die set. And that's going to go on top like that. And then you have one of two choices. You can either pop this up, like I did in this card. I popped up this layer on top. Or, but if you do that, then you, you can't really pop up the butterfly because then it'll be too high. Um, or you can put it on flush. But before we do that, let's stamp. Where did I put my... Where did I put my scrap paper? Oh, there it is. So let's stamp this first. Now, I don't want it to be really really dark so I'm just going to use a basic gray and I'm just going to stamp the edge of it just like that you can even do a little bit more down below if you wanted to All right, then I think, I think I am going to pop it up again. So you can either use your edges of your dimensionals. I happen to have the foam adhesive strips, which is great for this. So you just have to keep in mind how big your piece is that you've got on here so that I'm not putting like the foam right to the edge. So I'm just going to do that. And I'll get one more piece. And put that one there. And I'm going to put that over top like that. And we'll put some adhesive on this. Now you could put adhesive on this first and then put it on your paper and then do the other steps first. Totally up to you. I'm gonna center this on here like that. And then, honest to Pete, I really do need a bigger table I start off so nice and organized and then everything goes everywhere. Oh, 
Look at this. I'm so... I forgot to take the plastic part off. <laughs> Don't forget to do that. There we go. Okay. So then the gorgeous Dragonfly Garden stamp set. That's where we got that beautiful flower part from. And then you get two dragonflies and little dragonflies. And then this does like their wing if you wanted to do their wing. So I chose this dragonfly here. I stamped it on uh, purple posy because again, didn't have any white. And then um, I just wanted to color the wings. So I did it in a purple posy. This is light purple posy. And then what I did, because I just wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it, is I took uh, like a rich razzleberry and I just sort of followed some of the lines. in the dragonfly and then go back over again whoops in the purple posy and it all blends it all together I know it didn't look like it at the beginning but it does help to blend it all together they're great markers just like that and then for the body I did a yellow just like that and of course you can't have a card without some wink of Stella and that too sometimes will sort of blend the colors a little bit look at my fingers <laughs> it's all from the sparkly dye stuff so much fun all right so there we go so there's our dragonfly and then for this one, I have the sentiment. I did have the sentiment. Aha, there it is. You're an inspiration. And the great punch that we have. So it does the two different sort of finishes to it, which is so nice. I love this punch. I use this punch on so many things. So you just line it up. And then you can decide how long you want it to be. So I think I'm going to put it to there. And then I've got this gorgeous scalloped linen ribbon, which I love the, the purple little finish to it. So I thought I would use that. I'm going to cut it on a bit of an angle. Just like that. Then I'm going to put some adhesive on the bottom and line it up. Just like that. And then some more adhesive on the end, because that's the end that'll go on the raised part. And then I'm going to put a dimensional on the end, because that's the part that's going to be here on the thing. I'm just going to trim that a little bit more. And I think I'm going to put that right there. And then I've got my dragonfly I'm going to use a bit of glue be careful of that your dragonfly doesn't go off the edge too too much because you want to be able to fit it in an envelope come sa Now, I have that beautiful paper that we'll play with some more tomorrow. 
and it gives you sheets of dragonflies. Now I'd show you the sheets, but I've basically cut out and punched out all the dragonflies, but you can get teeny tiny little dragonflies as well. So that's what I've done is I've cut out some of these teeny tiny little dragonflies to put on there as well. And I have some of the flowers left over from the strawberry um, card kits. So I just put a few little strawberries, but uh, you could use your berry, little flower punch and punch out some pretty little purple flowers if you wanted to. Just like that. All right, let's put a little bit of glue on the dragonflies. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. There we go. And then I love the metallic they sort of seem to take on whatever color you put them with, right? So I think they're very pretty. So there we go. So that's our second card. Our last card, as I was making all of these, I was like, oh, look at that. I do have a piece of white. So. For the last card, I really wanted to showcase the um, the dragonflies that they have in this suite or this beautiful laser cut paper. I loved these dragonflies here and I really wanted something that was going to show them off as well as um, these pretty flowers and stuff too. So what I decided I saw on some other people's where they just did like a spot of color. It was so, so pretty. So all I did was you can use your blending brush. You can use, um, your foam brush, whatever you happen to have. I used two different blues just to give a bit of focus. So I started with this one. So I did have some ink left over on it from the other one, so that's okay. I would have tapped in this and then sort of done the center just to add a little darker in the center, but it's already kind of done that for me already. So there you go. So you can make your spot however big you like. You could use, um, you could do a yellow spot, like maybe it's in the sun. That would be pretty too. So this is the balmy blue. And then I was going to take my little dragonfly. You can put them like that, or you can put them the other way. Now, I do, I did order this. This is so fantastic. This is a fine tip glue pen. And when they mean fine tip, they mean fine tip. So, you can just add a little bit of glue to some of the larger spots with this fine tip, and it's fantastic like that and then you can take whichever flower you want 
think I might try this one this time maybe let's try this one let's see what this one looks like they're so pretty and they're kind of delicate but they're not like it's paper but it's not as um it's not as um I don't know like it's 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 thick like paper but it's it just seems to have a bit of some rigid rigidity to it so it's it's a very cool uh, product that's for sure so we'll, we'll do this flower and there you go so with the fine tip pen though, you have to put this little pin back inside to keep it good, which often requires me to get my glasses because I can't, <laughs> it's like trying to thread a needle, right? So. Oops. All right. Let's hope that order comes soon. <laughs> Alrighty. Paper, adhesive. I just put it on like that. There you go. Now you could add ribbon if you wanted to. You could add, you could stamp a little sentiment. Whatever it is that you have or you enjoy. I like the simplicity of it myself. And like I mentioned in my post, then people can um, add whatever sentiment they want to add to it. So, but you can do whatever you'd like. And there we go. So those are the three fantabulous cards using almost no white paper except for that one and yeah I had fun making the the backings for these ones this one I don't know I'm not sure if if it kind of turned out if you like the green with the navy in the back maybe when I get some more paper I'll try it with the blue as well so anyway let me know what you think Please like and share if you know of anyone that would be interested in watching some crafts to get ideas or inspiration. Please consider sharing this video. So thank you so, so much. Please, please, please be safe. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.